Hi, this is Raj and in this session we are going to cover more details on snapshot based CDC technique. As part of this session, the following topics will be covered. What is snapshot based technique? When to use this technique? How to implement this technique using Pentahokatal tool? What is snapshot technique? This technique involves on creating a complex extract of data from source table into the target staging area. Therefore, when the next time the incremental data needs to be loaded, a second version or in other words, snapshot of the source table is compared to the original one for spotting the changes. When to use this technique? Following are the use cases at which this technique shall be preferred. When the source table does not contain timestamp fields for incremental data fetch operation. When the ETL processing should not depend on database specific implementation such as in the case of triggers based or log based techniques. When we would like to make a distinction of insert and update operations. When we would like to identify a delete operation, even when there is a physical delete happening at the source system. Cons Absence of multiple updates detection This snapshot based technique has one of the cons which we have discussed on the previous timestamp based technique and that is multiple updates detection. Just to provide a recap, multiple updates detection is a feature to identify each updates that has occurred on a record between a successive incremental fetch. And this capability is not possible to be met as part of this snapshot based technique. How to implement this technique using PDA Kettle tool? To begin with, let us go through the source table used for this demo named language underscore one. It has only two fields, an ID field named language underscore ID and a name field which stores the language name. Note that this source table does not have any timestamp fields and hence timestamp based technique is not an option. The target is created with two tables namely stage underscore language underscore one. This would be our snapshot table and the final language underscore one table to store the language data in SCD type two format. Check out my session on SCD type two to understand more about what is SCD type two handling and how to implement the same in a data warehouse environment. The SCD type 2 fields in the target table are name and operation. This is because the business requirement is to make a new entry in the target table whenever there is a change involved in name and the operation. To begin with, the source table has 6 records and the target table has no records in it. Let us switch over to the kettle tool to go through the job and transformations involved for implementing snapshot based technique. This job j underscore cdc underscore snapshot calls for three transformations to identify and extract the changed data sets. Let us go through each of these transformations. The first transformation is prepared to populate stage table. This transformation plays a key role to identify the changed record sets and thereby preparing the data to insert into our snapshot table or the stage table. Let us go through the transformation in detail. There are two table input steps source underscore language underscore one 
and target underscore language underscore one. Both are used to select records from language underscore one table from source and target respectively. Since there are no records in target table, as part of the merge row step, all the records in source table would be identified as new records. This is achieved by performing a match operation using language ID as key and values to compare with name field. The nature of the DML operation is captured in flag field, which for the first run, the operation identified will be new. This anyways, we can see how it is being achieved by executing the transformation. The next step, filter rows, is used to ignore the identical records between each incremental run and also to pass on the modified records or the changed records to the next step or the next transformation. Coming back to our job, the next transformation is populate stage table. This is a simple transformation which gets the data sets from previous transformation and makes an insert or update into our staging or the snapshot table at the target. Then comes the final transformation, populate target language, where we get the data from the stage table or the snapshot table, then each of the records that are retrieved will be appended with the current date information. This is to capture the data load time in the data warehouse. And then the process would perform an SCD2 operation in the language underscore one table at target. As part of this dimension lookup or update step, the process would look for a match of language ID in the target table. If it is not found, then the incoming record will be inserted as one with the effective from as default minimum date as year 1900 and the effective till date as default maximum date 2099. On the contrary, if there is a match found in the target for the language ID and if the incoming values have been modified value in name or operation fields, then this would get created as new records with effective from and effective till being updated accordingly both for the existing record as well as for the records being inserted. If you couldn't get a clear picture on what we are talking about, don't worry, let us understand this by executing the transformation and observing the changes happening at each table on a stage by stage basis. Before we execute this job, let us check the source and target tables. The source language underscore one table consists of six records. The target stage underscore language underscore table is consisting of zero records and so is the case of the language underscore one table. Now, let me execute this job and see what happens. You can see that the job has been completed successfully. Now, let us examine the result from the target tables. We can see that the stage table now consists of six records from the source and the operation field is marked with a value of new which is as expected. The final language underscore one table is populated with the same six records and you can notice that operation is still marked as new which is good and the effective from and effective till are populated with the default minimum and maximum date range. And the version field is marked with the value of one. So all these details are good and as expected. 
so let us make a change in the source table by updating the language name french from title caps to all the letters in that language name as capital so i have updated the record let's now execute this job and see how this snapshot based cdc technique functions we can see that this job has been completed successfully and let us examine the snapshot table now we can see that the language french record has been updated with the operation changed which is good because this particular record has been changed whereas all the other records are still marked with new status which is as expected as well now let us check the final target table we can see that there is an additional record entry has happened for the capital french language name this is as expected because this is an scd type 2 table and there is a change involved in the name field and the operation field so we would expect a new record to be inserted and the version being 2 which is correct the key point to be noted is the older french record is marked with an effective till date of a time at which this record has been modified in the data warehouse this is because in the source if you remember we don't have any timestamp field at the source so there is no way to identify when this operation has been performed at source level so the only way which we are populating the effective till timestamp has to be the time at which this record has been changed in the data warehouse so this is the effective till time for the older record so this means the older record is valid from the minimum date until the date at which it has been loaded into the data mart or changed in the data mart are the data warehouse the new record has an effective from of the last records effective till date and the effective till date of this new record is going to be the future date so this means this new record is va valid from the time at which this has been loaded into the data warehouse until the time in the future date so all these are as expected now let us go ahead and make some more changes in the source side this time we are going to delete the language id 6 from the source table we can see that now the german language has been deleted from the source table now let us execute the job again and see what happens the job has been completed successfully and if i select the stage language underscore one table we can see that the german record has been marked with the operation as deleted which is good and as expected the other records also has the status or the operation fields with corresponding values as expected now let us see by selecting language underscore one table in the target we can see there is a new entry made for the german record with the operation as deleted and the version field as 2 the effective from and effective till are also populated correctly as i have detailed for the earlier case of french language so with this 
it is evident that the snapshot based cdc technique is used to capture all dml operations such as the new records like insert operation the update operation which is changed operation and then the delete operation so this if you remember we have mentioned as a one of the advantages of using snapshot based cdc technique hope you have got enough information from this demo and uh, let us meet in another session